Europe, this amazing continent, steeped in history and brimming with culture, stretches from the chilly shores of Iceland to the sunny beaches of Greece. With nearly 50 countries crammed into its borders, Europe boasts a stunning diversity of landscapes, languages, and, of course, some truly unique customs. Did you know Europe is the second smallest continent? Despite its size, it punches way above its weight when it comes to global influence. From the architectural marvels of Rome to the cutting-edge innovation hubs of Berlin, Europe has been a cradle of civilization for millennia. But enough with the history lesson. Today we're all about uncovering the quirky side of Europe. So, get ready to be surprised, delighted, and maybe even a little confused as we explore 25 things that only exist or are way more common in Europe. Number 25. Cat Cafes Cat cafes, once popular mainly in Asia, have made their way to Europe, offering patrons a unique experience. These establishments blend the cozy ambience of a cafe with the companionship of resident cats. The cats, often sourced from shelters or rescue organizations, roam freely within the designated cat area. Guests can pet, play, or simply observe these furry companions while unwinding from their day. Now, let's talk about the menu. Cat cafes offer a range of beverages, from classic coffees to specialty teas, along with a selection of pastries and light snacks. It's a laid-back environment where guests can enjoy their drinks and snacks alongside their new feline friends. Additionally, many cat cafes host special events and themed evenings, adding an extra layer of fun for visitors. Whether it's a yoga session surrounded by cats or a movie night with furry company, there's always something unique happening in these establishments. Number 24. The Cheese Rolling Tradition in Gloucestershire, England. In Gloucestershire, England, an annual tradition brings throngs of participants to Cooper's Hill, a spectacle known as cheese rolling. Here, competitors gather to chase a wheel of double Gloucester cheese down the steep slopes. Host, the objective is clear. Be the first to reach the bottom and seize the cheese. But navigating the hill's sharp incline and uneven surface poses a formidable challenge. Participant 1. It's an exhilarating rush. You've got to be quick on your feet and ready for anything. It's pure chaos, but that's what makes it so exciting. People come from all over to take part in the madness. The victor earns bragging rights as the one who managed to capture the cheese first, a testament to their speed, agility, and sheer determination. Number 23, Feast of the Ass. In medieval Europe, religious festivals took on various forms, some more unconventional than others. One such example is the Feast of the Ass, a peculiar celebration that once took place in certain regions of France. During the Feast of the Ass, communities would come together to commemorate the biblical story of Mary and Joseph's journey to Bethlehem. But here's the twist. A donkey played a central role in church ceremonies. Parishioners would lead a donkey into the church, often adorned with festive decorations. The donkey, symbolizing the one ridden by Mary, would then be part of dramatic reenactments of scenes from the Nativity story. But what made the Feast of the Ass truly unique were the humorous and irreverent elements incorporated into the celebrations. It wasn't uncommon for comedic antics to ensue, adding a light-hearted touch to the solemn occasion. While the festival may seem strange to us today, it reflected the medieval mindset and the blending of religious devotion with elements of folk culture. Number 22. Europe's Dark Christmas Tradition While much of the world celebrates Christmas with the jolly figure of Santa Claus in parts of Europe, particularly Austria and Germany, December 5th brings a very different visitor. Krampus, the demonic counterpart to St. Nicholas. On Krampus night, streets come alive with the terrifying sight of Krampus. Cloaked in fur and adorned with horns, chains, and bells, these sinister figures roam the streets, punishing naughty children and instilling fear in all who encounter them. Krampus night is a tradition that's been passed down for generations. It's a reminder to children to behave, or else they might face the wrath of Krampus. It's a mix of fear and excitement. Seeing the Krampus Parade is like stepping into a nightmare, but it's also a thrilling experience that's unique to our culture. The origins of Krampus can be traced back centuries, with roots in pagan folklore. He's said to be the companion of Saint Nicholas, tasked with punishing those who have been naughty throughout the year. Legend says that Krampus carries a bundle of birch branches, which he uses to swat misbehaving children. In some traditions, he even carries a sack to drag the truly wicked away to his lair. 
Today, Krampus Night is celebrated with parades, festivals, and events across Austria, Germany, and other parts of Europe. It's a spectacle that draws tourists from around the world, eager to witness the eerie spectacle firsthand. Number 21. Paid Public Toilets In Europe, particularly in busy tourist hubs, it's not uncommon to encounter public toilets that require a small access fee. While this practice may seem strange to visitors accustomed to free facilities, it serves an important purpose, covering maintenance costs. Host, paid public toilets in Europe often offer amenities such as clean facilities, stocked supplies, and sometimes even attendants to ensure cleanliness and provide assistance to users. Maintaining public toilets incurs expenses for cleaning supplies, maintenance staff, and general upkeep. By charging a small access fee, authorities can offset these costs and ensure that the facilities remain in good condition for all users. Number 20. Sunday Closures Across Europe, you might find shops and businesses with closed signs on Sundays. This can be a surprising switch from cultures used to 24-7 convenience. While some gas stations, convenience stores, and tourist areas might stay open, expect a more relaxed pace on Sundays in many European countries. Planning your shopping and errands accordingly is key for a smooth trip. Number 19. Bide Bonanza Brace yourself for a bathroom essential you might not be used to, the bide. This small sprayer next to the toilet is a common fixture in many European bathrooms and is used for personal hygiene after using the toilet. While it might seem unusual at first, bidets are considered a hygienic advantage by many Europeans. A 2017 study by the International Journal of Hygiene and Environmental Health found that bidet use was associated with a lower risk of self-reported hemorrhoids and anal itching. Number 18. Savoring smaller portions. European restaurant portions tend to be noticeably smaller than what you might be used to in other parts of the world, particularly North America. This is because Europeans generally focus on the quality and freshness of the ingredients rather than the sheer quantity of food. Don't be afraid to order multiple courses or ask for recommendations if you need a more substantial meal. Number 17. Siesta time. If you're visiting southern European countries like Spain or Italy, be prepared for the siesta. This is a midday break, typically in the afternoon, when many businesses and shops close for a few hours. The siesta is a way to escape the midday heat and recharge for the rest of the day. Factor in siesta hours when planning your activities. The tradition of siesta is gradually declining in some areas, but it's still common in many southern European countries. Number 16. Vacation Day Dream Workers in Europe generally enjoy a much higher number of vacation days compared to North America. This is often mandated by law, giving Europeans more time to relax and explore. If you're traveling for work, be mindful that some colleagues might be unavailable due to their vacation time. According to the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, OECD, on average, European Union member states offer workers a minimum of 20 paid vacation days per year, while the United States is the only OECD country without a statutory minimum paid vacation entitlement. Number 15. Separate bills. Splitting the bill evenly, often referred to as going Dutch, is the norm in many European social situations. Unlike some cultures where one person might treat the entire group, expect to pay for your meal or drinks at restaurants and bars. This applies to both casual outings with friends and even on dates. While it's perfectly acceptable to offer to pay for someone else, don't be surprised if your offer is politely declined. If you're dining with a larger group or for a special occasion, it's always a good idea to discuss beforehand whether you'll split the bill individually or go for a more traditional pooled approach. Number 14. Chimney Sweep Superstition Throughout Central Europe, and particularly in countries like Germany, Austria, and the Czech Republic, encountering a chimney sweep is considered a stroke of good luck. This centuries-old superstition stems from a time when chimneys were a major fire hazard. A clean chimney meant fewer fires, and a skilled chimney sweep was like a guardian against disaster. Various tales explain the lucky association with chimney sweeps. One popular legend involves a kind young sweep who saved a king or a princess from a runaway carriage. As a reward, the grateful royal declared all chimney sweeps to be lucky. Another story suggests that the soot itself held magical properties, warding off evil spirits and bringing good fortune to those who came into contact with it. 
The belief in the good luck brought by chimney sweeps extends beyond just seeing them. People would sometimes touch a sweep's buttons, or even try to get a smudge of soot on themselves, hoping to transfer some of that good fortune. This tradition continues today, with some chimney sweeps even selling small packets of lucky soot as souvenirs. Beyond safety, chimney sweeps were also seen as symbols of prosperity. Their ability to navigate tight spaces and clean out the heart of a home was associated with good housekeeping and a well-functioning household. This association with cleanliness and prosperity further solidified the belief in their good luck. Number 13. Love Locks on Bridges Love locks on bridges have become a global symbol of everlasting love. Couples etch their names or initials onto a padlock, attach it to a bridge railing, and toss the key into the water below, signifying their unbreakable bond. This tradition is particularly popular in Europe, with specific bridges in cities like Paris, Rome, and Cologne becoming overloaded with these tokens of affection. The exact origin of love locks on bridges remains unclear. Some stories point to a Serbian novel, Bridge on the Drina, published in 1945, where a character throws a padlock on a bridge after a heartbreak. Others claim the tradition began in Italy, inspired by the book, I Have Loved You So Long, 1992. Regardless of the source, the practice gained traction in the early 2000s and has become a popular tourist activity. Many European cities are now grappling with how to manage the love lock phenomenon. Some, like Paris, have removed locks altogether, while others have designated specific areas for them. The environmental impact and potential damage to historic structures are prompting a search for alternative ways for couples to express their love. Number 12. Lucky number 13. While Friday the 13th sends shivers down the spines of many across the globe, in some parts of Europe, the number 13 is embraced as a symbol of good fortune. This surprising twist on superstition has deep historical and cultural roots. The origins of the association of 13 with bad luck are murky, possibly linked to Norse mythology or events like the Last Supper, where 13 people were present, including Jesus, before his crucifixion. However, in various European cultures, a different narrative emerged. In Italy, 13 is seen as a lucky number, especially when playing the national lottery Il Gioco del Lotto, Friday the 13th is also considered an auspicious day to embark on new endeavors. Similar to Italy, Poles often associate 13 with good luck. Some believe it brings prosperity, while others see it as several positive changes. Similar to Italy, Poles often associate 13 with good luck. Some believe it brings prosperity, while others see it as several positive changes. While not universally embraced as lucky, the number 13 doesn't hold the same negative connotations in Germany as it does in other places. 13 is sometimes seen as several transformations or new beginnings. Number 11. Name Day Celebrations In many European countries, birthdays aren't the only day to celebrate. Name Days, a cherished tradition, add another layer of festivity to the year. Name Days stem from Christian calendars that assign a saint to each day of the year. People named after those saints would celebrate their namesake's feast day. Over time, this evolved into a custom of celebrating a person's name day, regardless of whether it corresponds to a saint or not. Name days are a lighter celebration compared to birthdays. They are a time for friends and family to acknowledge the person and their name. Greetings, phone calls, and small gifts like flowers, chocolates, or thoughtful cards are common ways to mark the occasion. The importance of name days varies across Europe. In some countries like Hungary, Bulgaria, and Greece, name days are a significant event. In others, they might be a more casual occasion. It's also not uncommon for people to share the same name day, especially if they have common names. However, the rise of birthday celebrations and globalization might be causing name days to fade slightly in some regions. Number 10. Black cat crossing your path means good luck. The symbolism of black cats is a fascinating mix of cultures and beliefs. While many parts of the world associate them with bad luck, in several European countries, a black cat crossing your path is viewed quite differently as a sign of good fortune. Black cats are generally considered lucky omens in these countries. Owning a black cat is even believed to bring prosperity in some regions. In Germany, the direction a black cat crosses your path matters. From left to right signifies good luck while the opposite might be interpreted as less fortunate. 
Similar to Germany, some parts of Italy believe a black cat crossing your path from left to right brings good luck, while others consider them lucky in general. The good luck association with black cats extends beyond just their movement. In Scotland, for example, a black cat arriving at your doorstep is seen as a sign of incoming wealth. Number 9. Silent Disco Silent discos ditch the traditional booming speakers and replace them with wireless headphones. Attendees wear these headphones, which offer multiple channels playing different music genres, from thumping techno to groovy classics. The beauty of silent discos lies in the freedom of choice. Don't feel like dancing to the current channel? Simply switch to another with a tap on your headphones. This allows for a diverse crowd with different musical preferences to party together under one roof. While silent, the experience is anything but dull. The changing colors on the headphones indicate which music channel people are tuned into, creating a vibrant visual spectacle on the dance floor. Imagine a sea of flashing red lights for the energetic channel, contrasting with calming blues for the chill-out tunes. Silent discos also have a surprising eco-friendly aspect. Eliminating the need for loudspeakers reduces noise pollution and allows events to be held in locations that might otherwise have noise restrictions, opening up new possibilities for outdoor parties. Number 8. Stairway to your apartment In many European cities, apartments are housed in multi-story buildings with a distinct characteristic narrow winding staircases. This can be quite a surprise, especially for visitors accustomed to modern conveniences. These historic climbs, built with sturdy stone or iron, offer a charming connection to the past, but be prepared for a leg workout. While tight spaces might challenge mobility and require creative maneuvering with groceries, these staircases can also become social hubs, fostering connections with neighbors as you navigate the climb. Number 7. Kissing on both cheeks. In many European countries, greetings involve a kiss, or two, on the cheeks. This can be a delightful cultural exchange, but it can also be a confusing minefield for the uninitiated. Generally, kisses are exchanged between people of the opposite sex and women who know each other. Men greeting men might shake hands or offer a friendly pat on the back, depending on the situation and their relationship. The most common greeting involves a quick peck on each cheek, starting with the right cheek and alternating sides. It's a light touch, more of a brush than a full-on kiss. The number of kisses can vary depending on the country and region. In France, it's usually two kisses, while in some Eastern European countries, it might be three or even four. If you're unsure, observe how locals greet each other and follow their lead. Number 6. Underground Adventures Europe holds a secret beneath its bustling streets and charming villages, a labyrinthine network of tunnels and underground structures whispering stories of the past. These hidden worlds, often unseen by tourists, offer a glimpse into the continent's rich history and ingenuity. Medieval cities often had secret passageways used by residents to escape sieges or invasions. These hidden tunnels might connect castles to churches or wind beneath bustling marketplaces, a testament to the resourcefulness of bygone eras. Beneath Paris lies a network of tunnels known as the Catacombs, a chilling yet fascinating ossuary holding the remains of millions of Parisians. Walking through these bone-lined tunnels offers a somber reflection on mortality and history. Some European cities hold Cold War bunkers and bomb shelters, remnants of a tense past. Exploring these often preserved shelters provides a sobering reminder of the region's history and the lengths people went to during times of conflict. Number 5. The World's Biggest Tomato Fight In the small town of Buñol, Spain, a once-a-year celebration throws tradition out the window with a hilarious, messy twist La Tomatina, the world's biggest tomato fight. On the last Wednesday of August, thousands of participants, armed with over 150 tons of ripe tomatoes, descend upon the streets of Buñol. For a glorious one-hour battle, all inhibitions are thrown aside, as revelers pelt each other with juicy tomatoes. The origins of La Tomatina are shrouded in mystery, with some stories suggesting a playful food fight gone viral, while others point to a political protest gone awry. Whatever the reason, it has become a beloved tradition, attracting international attention and adding a touch of wacky fun to the Spanish summer. Number 4. Sinterklaas Surprise In the Netherlands, there's a whole different gift-giving figure waiting in the wings for the holidays. Forget the jolly man in red, here comes Sinterklaas. Imagine a jolly bishop in a red robe and a pointed hat, 
arriving by boat from Spain, accompanied by his mischievous helpers, the Zwarte Pieten, Black Pete. This is Sinterklaas, the patron saint of children, who kicks off the festive season in the Netherlands in mid-November. The celebrations surrounding Sinterklaas are a delightful mix of traditions. Children leave their shoes out with carrots or hay for Sinterklaas's white horse. Yes, he has a horse. And in return, they receive small gifts and treats. Sinterklaas Day itself, celebrated on December 5th, is a bigger affair with gift giving and family gatherings. Here's the twist. Sinterklaas's helpers, the Zwarte Pieten, have been a source of controversy in recent years. Their traditional blackface appearance is seen by many as racist. Thankfully, the character is transforming, with many opting for soot smudges instead of blackface makeup. Number 3. Car-Free Zones Many European cities are taking a bold stance towards sustainability and prioritizing pedestrians and cyclists. Car-free zones and extensive bike lane networks are transforming the way people get around, creating a healthier, more vibrant urban environment. No more dodging exhaust fumes, just enjoying the fresh air and sunshine. Car-free zones become vibrant public spaces, perfect for people watching, socializing, and soaking up the atmosphere of the city. Cafes spill out onto sidewalks, and streets become extensions of living rooms. Number two, square watermelons. Square watermelons are indeed a surprising sight, and while they originated in Japan to save space and improve transportation efficiency, they have found a niche market in some parts of Europe as well. Europe prioritizes fresh, local ingredients, but that doesn't mean there aren't a few surprises in store. While pre-packaged, everything might be the norm back home, Europe offers a chance to discover unique seasonal delights. And who knows, you might even encounter a square watermelon. Yes, these boxy fruits, originally grown in Japan to save space, have found a small but devoted following in some European markets. So keep your eyes peeled for this unexpected grocery find. Number one, baby jumping in Spain. El Salto del Niño, or the Baby Jumping Festival, is held in the village of Castrillo de Murcia in northern Spain. This centuries-old ritual involves carefully jumping a newborn baby, unbaptized and still dressed in swaddling clothes, over a bed of mattresses held by men of the village. Yes, you read that right. While it might seem shocking to outsiders, locals believe this practice cleanses the baby of original sin and grants them good health and fortune. Thankfully, the baby's safety is paramount. The jump itself is very short, and experienced villagers ensure a safe landing. And there you have it, folks. 25 weird and wonderful things that you can only find in Europe. But what do you think? Have you ever experienced any of these things while traveling in Europe? Maybe you've encountered an even weirder quirk. Share your thoughts and travel stories in the comments below. And don't forget to like and subscribe for more adventures around the globe.